Hey guys, we are going to paint up this little parrot right here. And this painting I did was a test of the No Name Airbrush Paints, Made in USA Airbrush. And I have a review on that elsewhere, and some of you guys have probably seen the clip and the short version of this, but this is the actual tutorial of this painting right here. So let's get into that. Started out this painting by spraying through a cut paper stencil to get my basic lines in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these colors in and we're going to put them kind of blurry. So we're not worried about putting in any detail right now. So that first color that we've mixed up, we've added a little bit of, gr of red to the original green apple mix. I'm mean, using the No Name Airbrush paints for this. So using those colors and only those colors. Then I'm going to come in and I add just a little tiny bit of blue to my orange just to make it a little bit duller than a standard orange which would be too vibrant and notice I'm putting that in kind of streaky and that may not immediately be noticeable but it is important so the blackish color you see me using I'm just simply using Payne's gray straight out of the bottle which is Payne's gray is an ultramarine mixed gray um, you know, you can mix your own version of, of Payne's Gray, but of course many manufacturers have their own version of Payne's Gray. And so you can see how I'm working that in there, gently bringing that in and bringing it in a streaky kind of look. I'm not going to finish this off on the bottom until after I get things in the front, but I'm working in a, we don't want a lot of detail in here. I'll use that black beer wheat to put a little coloring in there, but not a lot because we want all of the detail in the center portion of the face. The star of the show is going to be right around the eye, the beak, and the white section around the eye. So again, I'm using the black beer or using the Payne's gray to get the coloring in for that lower beak. And then I'm going to come in here with erasers. I'm going to use uh, a aggressive pencil eraser. I'm going to use a soft pencil eraser and I'm going to use a little bit of an exacto knife to create those scratches and things like that in the beak. So I'm going to come in here and blend this out and of course it's not going to just be flood fill. You don't want to just put all of your color in one place. I also want a little bit of color variation from that gray, so I added a little bit of brown and sprayed over the top of it, a transparent brown. And so now I'm going to come in here and start bringing out some erasing and doing a little bit of highlighting work and getting that grayish nice tone off there that I want. Then I went ahead and masked off that beak, which I should have done in the first place, so that I can get a really crisp edge and that will make a tremendous difference in the end of the artwork. Now I've actually put a little black in there and I'm going to get a little bit darker in a few spaces on the beak there just to give it a little bit of depth and dimension and here you'll see once I remove that how crisp that line is. Now around the eyeball and where I'm going to put all these little textures in here, I mixed up violet and yellow. I wanted this purplish tone, but I wanted it to be a little bit duller than if I was running a straight yellow. And then as I want to get a little bit darker in here, I want to get a little bit muddier in here as I go on the bottom, I'm going to add a little bit of that Payne's Gray to that same mix. So it's really pretty simple, even though it looks very complicated. I used the black spots that I sprayed through the stencil to give me a reference point to where I was going through to how I wanted to put the wrinkles in. And then from there, I just need to pay attention to the direction which they need to be. They're, they start to work from a circle and then work outward and then change direction as they get lower. So we put a little bit of a shadow in there. I'm gonna let the overspray run up on there and then I take my eraser at the high point and add just a little bit of a highlight. I'm working slowly as you can see and continuing to add those wrinkles. And like I said, you just need to pay attention to where your light source is coming from. So you're always going to have, whenever you have a shadow like that, you're going to have a high point. The high point is always gonna be a little bit lighter. How bright that highlight is depends on how direct the lighting is. You can never be too light because you can always darken it in, which is what I'm going to do here. I mixed up a little bit more of that violet and yellow tone and then sprayed in to darken things as I wanted to after I put those highlights in there. Now I'm going to come in and turn my attention to the 
the feathers on the back. And we start out with just a yellow mixed with just a tiny, tiny little bit of violet. And then we add a little bit more violet to get that kind of orangish yellowish color. And that is only two colors in there is that violet and that in in yellow for that orangey color kind of burnt sienna ish look i'm going to use my blackbeard wheat to create just a little bit of texture in there but we do not again want to put too much texture and an emphasis on the back side of the fur we want it to be a little bit on the loose side so that we have room to bring our focus towards the center face so the areas that are further away from the eye are a little out of focus so they will not have as much detail so as as normal i'm always working from the light to the dark and then i'm using that where the blue end that is an area in which i know i can work up to and not have to worry about overspray because i'll be bringing other colors in there over the top of it that will be able to cover up the colors i'm putting in now to get this orangey red tone, I've taken my orange and mixed just a tiny little bit of blue with it. And then I added a little bit of red to it to get to that more reddish shade as we needed to. I'm coming back in, as you can see, and reinforcing the darks. Now, as I get closer and closer to things, we wanna reinforce those dark shades. And I'm gonna add some streaky little things go on with the blacks or what we would call blacks even though that was done with Payne's gray once again now there are certain things that are just really really difficult to do with an airbrush and some of these ridiculously tiny lines in here i pulled out the smallest paintbrush that i had because there is no shame in picking up another tool to do a job now to create a little bit of shading a little bit of darkness we're going to make that hair blend in a little bit better but we're going to take and mix red with green to get a really dark red right there and i'm going to gently spray it in and create that dimension do you see how that's starting to carve out just a little bit of dimension in there now I'm going to go ahead and spray the yellow spots just so I can kind of keep them in mind and where, you know, things change from blue to yellow to green and things like that. And I'm going to work around it. And it might not be the easiest way necessarily, but I think it was just the best way that I could kind of keep it in my head and not go over the yellow spots with the blue color accidentally. So I'll come in there and work pretty tight with the airbrush to get up next to it. But then I'll use, see how I'm using a paintbrush to create a free hand shield that has a rough edge up next to the yellow points now i'm going to come back after i put a little bit of that green in over there where it's the turquoise green which is a blue mixed with green and then of course we have dulled that down just a little bit using the opposite color there i'm going to mix up a orangish brownish shade and we'll use that for the shadow and then again notice how i'm using the paintbrush as a little freehand shield. I mixed up orange and blue to make a really murky brown that's almost a little bit too gray in this circumstance, uh, but made sure and kept that uh, transparent to create my blending and shading there. Then I'm gonna come in with my X-Acto knife and I'm gonna pull out just a few little fine lines right there. Mixing up a very, very dark brown, I'm going to use my paintbrush again to outline the outer edge of the eye because, again, why not use a tool that's available? I'm going to mix yellow along with violet again to get that coloring in the eye, and then I'm going to continue to build that all the way to an almost gray mix and then outline it over using my freehand shield to kind of get that really cool glassy look. Notice there's a couple variations of blue in the right hand side over the feathers there, but none of that is really detailed. It's just all free handed in there a little bit with the airbrush with a darker blue. And now as I work directly over that eye right there, I'm going to use my exact and eyes as, you, as you've seen there. I used a green mixed with red again to make an olive green and transparent and use the exacto knife to scratch out details. 
I unfortunately missed a little bit of this front end, but on this little orange portion of the front, there's really not a lot to show anyway. So what I did is came in here with a, a orange mix. Of course, none of these are usually straight out of the bottle, always desaturated just a little bit. Then I'm gonna use my X-Acto knife to pull out some tiny little highlights right there. And then I'm gonna again use my paintbrush. We're gonna mix that with a darker shade. So in other words, we're gonna add probably green to our red or blue to our orange to make it a little bit darker and then put in some dark sections and give us some variation of shade and those dark sections are the shadow sections behind the fur or feathers rather. And that is the final painting right there. And so all of this painting was done with the No Name Airbrush paints right here on a piece of illustration board. And it was all painted with my GSI Creos PS270. So if you guys are interested in those products, I'll drop some links down below. This is a beginner airbrush paint designed to be. So this like whole sets like in the US is 22 bucks available on Amazon and also available on Spray Gunner. So it's designed to be a beginner airbrush paint, although you're going to see me probably use this a whole lot in the future. I'm sorry it took me uh, weeks, about three weeks from the time I actually painted this before I got around to this video, but I had to leave town for a funeral, a bunch of other things going on. And Miss Allison had to have a hysterectomy. So for the ladies out there that can understand what we're going through there, we got that going on. But anyway, guys, that's gonna be a wrap for today. We appreciate you coming by. I'm Bill Kennedy with the Airspace. If you didn't know, y'all have a great day. Bye.